Good morning from Clearwater Beach. It is a beautiful morning out. Have a look at this. Wow. The beach is so like just quiet and serene. It is awesome looking. I wish that we were out on the beach right now. We're gonna go try to find some breakfast mm -hmm. and then we're gonna head over to the aquarium again. So we have a, a special thing that we're doing where we get to take some photos before the aquarium opens, which is very exciting because we get, I think we're gonna be able to get to see some of the dolphins a little bit more close up than we did yesterday. Right. Um, but also we're gonna check out some of the stuff we missed yesterday. So there's a whole whale um, exhibit that we never even got to see. Right. All right, we are all done here at Winter the Dolphins Beach Club. Mm -hmm. It was actually a really good night's sleep. It was. So they did play the music until about nine o'clock but it wasn't because we used the noise machine for Jackson, so we really couldn't hear anything, which was honestly great. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the bed was very comfortable. The bed was super comfortable. The sheets were very soft. Yeah. And I liked that they gave us like a real extra blanket, not just a sheet. A lot of like the Disney resorts and the theme park resorts just give you like a thick sheet. We got like a real blanket. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Here's something that I didn't notice. So in the bathroom, on the shower door, there's like a Winter the Dolphin etching. I don't know if you all can see it, but their little symbol is Winter the Dolphin and it's etched into the shower door right there. All right, here we are at the Clearwater Aquarium before they open and they have this exhibit called Whales Living with Giants and they have inflatable life-sized whales. Wow, whales are very large. So when we were here yesterday, we couldn't really get a size of this window because there were people all around. But now that there's nobody here, I can show you with Jen and Jackson how large this window into the habitat is. Holy cow, it is massive. And we're greeted with Nicholas. It's a Nicholas. Oh, brought this one for you, my best favorite. Look, he's staring it down. into Living with Giants, which is a temporary exhibit here that will be leaving August 31st. Ooh, mustache or toothed whale. Did you know that there are two types of whales? One that means mustache whales and the other one means toothed whales. 
So I guess the mustached whales have bristly plates on their upper jaw, which are thought to look like a mustache. So you can kind of see, these are the bristly plates. That's so interesting. It kind of looks like palmetto boots. This is a rice whale, humpback whale, blue whale, and a right whale versus the jawbone of a sperm whale, which has definitive teeth. They have a Gervais beaked whale skeleton. That's so interesting. It almost looks like a dolphin, but it's a whale. And to be fair, dolphins are in the same family as whales. Um, sir, please make sure to keep at least one baby beaked whale apart. <laughs> Thank you. Please keep at least one baby beaked whale apart, six feet. So this isn't a baby. This one's much bigger than six feet. Oh yeah. Is this the, is this the head of a blue whale? Oh, it is just the head of a blue whale. And the blue whale is the largest animal on earth. And then we also found out another interesting fact about the sperm whale is that a third of their body is head and they have the largest brain of any animal on earth. But the one that they have in their vestibule is a humpback whale. And they have all these signs out here that tells you what the population worldwide is, about how long they are. So the humpback whale is about the size of a school bus. And then they tell you what threats they have and they're in partial status. So their endangered status is partial, meaning that some stocks are endangered. Oh, and this is free with your admission. The blue whale, one of the blue whales threats is sound pollution, which is really interesting to me. All right, we're headed in. Look at this. I think we are still in part of the blue whale. This is the blue whale's rib cage right now over top of us. And I think that this is a blue whale's heart. Yeah, this is a life-size blue whale heart. They have a display of a blue whale heart next to a human heart, an adult human heart. It's so interesting because I feel like Jackson could fit in here. Yeah. Wow. Hey! What is this, buddy? This is a North Atlantic right whale. Do you hear him? Yeah. And a baby. They also have a threat of sound pollution. This thing is huge. Look at it compared to Jen over there. I feel like this exhibit is really cool because obviously we would never see one of these whales yeah. at a place like this or probably in real life. I just feel like we would probably never see one. So to see their real size. Well, also, even if we did see it in real life, we would just see it at the top of the water. So we wouldn't see the entire thing. Yeah, this is actually a really cool to be able to see the whole entire whale, the full size of the whale. Oh yeah. It's it's really like... Um, it's daunting, isn't yeah. it? They're huge. <laughs> they're really big. See, this is the rice's whale. And the most interesting thing that I find about this whale is that it's kind of slender. So it's very long, but it doesn't look as daunting as some of the other whales in here because it's so skinny. Oh, and it has an unknown diet. Wow. Interesting. Originally identified as bride's whale, new genetic and physiological evidence has proven this as a new species. Wow. So they really don't know. The weight unknown, they just know that it's 41 feet long and they don't know what its diet is. Oh, it's a proposed new species. So it hasn't even been approved as a new species yet. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just proposed. Oh, wow. This is so interesting. There's less than a hundred of them. Wow. I had no idea that so many whales had a threat of sound pollution. Oh, do you hear them? The clicking? Yeah. yeah. It's really cool to be able to hear what they would sound like too. Right. Because again, we probably would never hear this. And even if I did, I don't know that I would be like, oh, that's a sperm whale. Right? I would be like, there must be something like else going on in the water. It kind of sounds like tapping under the water. Yeah. This makes me want to go on like a whale watching tour. Me too. I want to get up to the front of this sperm whale. So this is Tim next to a sperm whale. Wow. Yeah. Very big. Yeah. So it, that sounds like a, like a soundtrack to a horror movie. So the whole reason that it's called this sperm whale is because it's got this spermaceti organ which is used for buoyancy and enhanced echolocation. Huh. Oh, they use their phonic lips up here in this air sac to create the sound for echolocation. Oh, and I had no idea the blowhole was way up the front too. 
Weird. He got his teeth too. He eats the giant squid? Oh. Wow. Look at how low their brain sits in their body too. So we know that the sperm whale eats giant squids, but I didn't realize that they also eat sharks. Wow. It also says that the sperm whale is the loudest animal on earth and can create clicks at 230 decibels. So this animal can make a noise louder than a jet, which makes sense because water is denser than air. So the noise would have to be louder to travel further underwater. I can only imagine how loud it would be if they brought it out here into the air, like out, if they made the noise outside of the water. So the clicking noise that we heard that this sperm whale makes is him echolocating. And toothed whales are the only ones that can echolocate because they use it for hunting. If you come across a filter feeder like the North Atlantic right whale, they do not echolocate. And in order to get food, they don't have to hunt. They just find large groups of krill and they filter it out. And here is the tooth of the right whale. So you can see it has like these little hairs falling off of it and they use that to filter out the krill and they push out all of the seawater and keep the krill inside. And if you're wondering what krill is, here is a look at it. It's kind of like a little tiny shrimp. There's a sign here that says how you can help whales and of course, keep the oceans and beaches clean, buy sustainable seafood, be a local vor, meaning buy locally rather than through commercial fishers because one of the leading causes of death for many large whales is vessel strikes. So you'll, that's less common with smaller local boats. Reduce your carbon footprint, vote for representatives that support the protection of whales, report whale sightings. So if you see a whale, you can dial 1-877-WHALE-HELP or call the US Coast Guard on VHF channel 16 and let them know where you saw it. Boat responsibly, and that means to keep speeds at 10 knots or less in areas where whales are known to be frequent, and then watch them responsibly. This is neat. They have hand-carved whales that are made entirely from ocean trash. Oh, wow. And they kind of feel like flip-flops. You want to touch it? And they're carved, hand-carved in Kenya. Oh, wow. That's neat. It's also very sad. Yeah. Flip-flops are, there's a lot of flip-flop trash in the ocean. Really? Yeah, people just wear flip-flops and lose them as oh. they're walking in the ocean. Same thing with sunglasses. So I was actually reading a post back there um, about the like fisherman's gear. Oh. How that's like a big thing that's actually hurting the whales right now. Oh, like leftover lines and yeah, and ropes traps and stuff? like like different uh, fish traps and crab traps and things. Some of them can weigh like hundreds of pounds. Oh. And although whales are are very strong. Um, they can become entangled in these this gear and they can't get it off so it'll actually like slow them down and cause them to starve yeah um, it'll also cause strangulation so that's something that you should just be very aware of if you're fishing is to like take your gear with you if you can I don't know how that works with like deep sea traps well also another thing that we said as we were talking about how to save the whales is to buy local mm -hmm. so if you buy local seafood they use smaller traps, smaller lines. So the whales are less likely to get tangled up in those sorts of lines, traps, ropes, as they would with like a commercial fishing vessel where they're using lots and lots of rope, lots and lots of nets, trying to catch as many fish as possible at one time. And those things are more of a threat to the whales. So if you buy locally, you're helping out whales. Up here, they also have some props from Dolphin Tail, the movie, because that was some of that was filmed here. And it was all about winter. So this is Sawyer's bike. And then they have different things that they use to try to figure out the prototype of Winter's tail. The prototype of Winter's tail was worn around 2010. Oh look, they got carbon fiber tails and stuff like that. Whoa, this is a animatronic. They use an animatronic when they were filming some of the scenes from Dolphin Tail and Dolphin Tail 2. Look at that. There's the internals of an animatronic. Wow. I would imagine they use this for scenes where they would take the dolphin out of the water and move it around. Oh yeah, you can kind of see there's one of the scenes where they took the dolphin out and they used an animatronic instead of the real dolphin. Do they have, is it like, oh yeah, you can see this side looks like a dolphin. It's kind of like hard to see with the glare. 
they have a touch tank where you can touch some cow nose raid. Here they come. They're all coming over to say hello. They'll get pretty excited. Yeah, look, here he comes. He's coming to say hello. And then you can touch it. Can you put your finger in? Put your little finger in. Look. Oh, yeah. 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 No, it's pretty like normal. Yeah. 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 Another thing that's really interesting about this aquarium is that they just bring in water from the bay and they filter it all right here. And they use just regular ocean water that's been filtered. There's a cafe here called Shark Bites. Wonder what kind of food they've got. Also, everywhere around the museum they have these water bottle fillers. I love those because it tells you how many disposable plastic water bottles you have not used by using this. Yeah. Pretty cool. So we grabbed some food from Shark Bites to eat on the way home and you notice that there is a charger in the table. You this know? Is cool. Jen's phone is charging. What a good idea. I want this at home. Yeah. You can get beer here, you can get wine, you get coffee, you can get sodas. Kids have cheeseburger, grilled cheese, chicken tenders. And they have small plates like onion rings, fried pickles, smoked salmon. And they also have you know, like cheeseburgers, a bacon barbecue bacon burger, an impossible burger, a shrimp burger. I wonder what that means. Is the patty made out of shrimp or do they just like put shrimp on a bun? A crispy grouper sammy, a hot yard bird, which is like a Nashville hot chicken, mango grilled chicken sandwich. These all sound really good. And then of course they have salads too. So here's what we got. Jen got a shrimp burger. Look at these shrimp in here. Like gigantic shrimp. It's like three huge shrimp in the shape of a pet. Wow. But it also has key lime sauce on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that so. sounds delicious. And then Jackson, we got him just like a grilled cheese here. And then I got the barbecue bacon burger. Ooh, look at that bacon looks real nice. With some toasty fries too. And all of the utensils and all of the boxes are all compostable. So there you have it. That was our trip out to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. This morning was awesome. We had so much fun. Yeah, we got to see Nicholas. Jackson got to play with him. It was really awesome just seeing them being so playful. And they were really responding to Jackson. Yeah. It was so cool to see that. And we got to see the whales walking with giants and whales, giants among us exhibit. It was actually really neat to see just how big whales really are. Yeah. And to hear how they sound. That's something we would never hear on a in normal life, you know? Yeah. So it was cool. So all in all, we do highly recommend coming out to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. I was gonna say, I think this is a really great rainy day idea too. It's pouring right now and yeah. it's very busy. You can tell that this is what people do in the rain. Yeah. Um, but even just on a normal day, it's so beautiful. All right, so now we are headed home. We're gonna go out and drive through the ridiculous storm that's out there. And we gotta charge the car too. Yeah. So it's gonna be a fun trip home. So let's do it, let's head on out. All right, we are back home and we had such a good trip. We really did. I had so much fun at the aquarium. We've been before and I'll link that video down below. I linked it in yesterday's video, but I feel like every time that we've gone, I've learned new things. Yeah. It's just really amazing like how much information they can pack in and still make it fun. Oh, yeah. I think that's really cool. Jackson had a really great time. There was lots of really cool interactive things, especially for like little kids to do. Yeah, he really enjoyed, there was like buttons everywhere, little puzzles. <laughs> there were so many buttons and he, it was cool because some of the buttons like lit up, some of them made noises. So it was just very neat and it did hold his attention. So I just thought that was really awesome because I know with toddlers especially, that can be a hard thing to do. But after we were leaving, like as we were leaving, we ended up going to the gift shop we found some really cool things. Yeah, we did. We wanted to share that with you with like a little mini haul. Um, some of these things were gifted to us by the aquarium and by the beach club, but some of these we just bought ourselves because we enjoyed our time so much. And a lot of this just goes right back to the aquarium and helps them out and helps out the animals. So we were happy to uh, purchase more fun stuff to yeah. help out the animals. We even made a donation while we were there. We did. Yeah, that's something that you can do when you're at the gift shop is they ask if you would like to donate to help the animals. And I highly recommend if you can to do it. They do such great work. So, yeah. Yeah. So the first thing that we got was actually up in the whales area. After we got through the whales exhibit, they had like a little pop-up gift shop. And this is a whale that is made out of pollution. Yeah. So 
Flip-flops are a large form of pollution in the ocean and... It says, I just want to read this really quick because on the tag, it actually has some really cool information like specific numbers. Over 3 billion people wear flip-flops in Asia, the Middle East, India, and Africa, and they have collected 450 tons of trash and upcycled it into art for advocacy. This, you can actually tell it's a bunch of flip-flops glued together and then hand carved. So it's made by a company called Ocean Soul Africa, and their mission is to turn the Earth's flip-flop pollution into inspiring art and to promote marine conservation and create employment opportunities in underdeveloped communities. So this was made by a flip-flop artist in Kenya. So Jackson actually picked this one out. This was the color that he liked. So another thing that we got in the Wales gift shop was some t-shirts. And this one, I got this blue tie-dyed shirt with a couple of humpback whales on it. And it says Marine Life Rescue Project. So help support the whales. So I also got a couple of shirts from the whale gift shop. So this one says Save the Whales and it says the Marine Life Rescue Project. I just thought it looked really cool and like kind of retro, super soft and comfortable. And then I got another one that's like the exact same emblem and everything, but it's like a little blue crop top. And they're just so soft. Like I couldn't not buy these. Yeah, and I like the retro look of them too. Yeah. Super comfortable. So then we headed down to the regular gift shop that's like just for the aquarium. So I got this really cool hat that says Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Um, I have a thing for like denim hats, I guess. I This one spoke to me, I had to get it. I wore it yesterday, it was very comfortable. We also got matching hats. I just did my hair, so I'm not gonna put mine on, on all the way. <laughs> um, these are fun because they are, um, they do have UV protection. They're great beach hats and it just has the Clearwater Marine Aquarium like little logo on it. Also, they do have some vent holes, which is something that I've always looked for in this lifeguard style hat because mm. they do get hot. Oh yeah. So this one's a good one. I have a thing for uh, matching t-shirts with Jackson. Mm -hmm. So they happen to have two shirts that one was an adult size and one was a Jackson size. And so this is the front of it and this is the back of it. And it shows how Winter's Tail works. And it says Clearwater Marine Aquarium Research Team. So this is so cool. It just has like um, the like the mechanical workings it's of like her. It's like a blueprint. Yeah, of her tail. It's so neat. And it says the Winter Project. Very cool. So I'm excited for Jackson and Tim to wear their shirts together. That'll be so <laughs> cute. <laughs> we also got Jackson a little rash guard. So this one was fun because it's all about like, um, it has the sea turtles on it and just says devotion to the ocean. And I think that's something that living in Florida, um, we want to make sure that he understands like how important it is to, you know, care for the, for the environment around us. And that was something that was really heavily talked about at the aquarium. So I don't know, I thought this was a fun one for him. And it obviously has sun protection, so that's a good one to have. Something that I thought was really interesting about a lot of these things that have the Clearwater Marine Aquarium logo on them is that it was established in 1972. Oh, and I really? didn't realize that it's been around for that long. Oh, I didn't either. Yeah. Oh, wow. Very cool. So we also got a couple of keychains um, because we wanted to do like a fun little giveaway with you guys. So be on the lookout for that. We'll probably do that one on Instagram, but we got a plushy keychain that shows winter. It kind of shows off like what her prosthetic tail would look like on a plush. So that one was fun. And then we got a little metal keychain that just says, I love winter. So that's another one. And then the rest of these items were gifted to us from either the aquarium or from the beach club resort. So everything before this, we purchased ourselves, but we did get some little fun um, things from the aquarium. So they gave us this cool hat. Oh yeah. That has their logo. This would be a fun one for the beach because it is mesh on the back. So I feel like that would be a comfortable one in the heat. Well, oh, it's a fitted one too. It's a fitted hat. Oh, is Flex it? Flex fit, yeah. Oh, Very fancy. Nice. Yeah. They gave us a pint glass that just says Brews and Rescues Clearwater Marine Aquarium. So this next one was a gift for Jackson from the aquarium and it is a North American river otter and it's inside of uh, it's inside of an official rescue stretcher. And this is something that's similar to those that are used by the rescue team at the aquarium. Your rescue helps the real life animals at the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. Another thing that's really cool about this is that they do strive to be eco-friendly. So this plush is stuffed with 100% recycled water bottles. Oh, that's Like neat. plastic. So it is, it's got recycled plastic on the inside. It's super soft and everything. And we got a vinyl decal from Winter the Dolphins Beach Club. And this was gifted to us by the Beach Club. 
It's very cool. It just has uh, their emblem of Winter the Dolphin and then the initials of the beach club. And they also gave us an insulated water bottle yeah. with their logo on it. I think it's really cool that a lot of the companies are giving these out now or are just selling them because it's another way to reduce your plastic waste. Yeah. So. And it keeps your it keeps your liquids either hot or cold. Nice. So that was everything that we got on this beach trip. Like I said, we are going to do a fun giveaway with some of the items that we showed you. So be on the lookout for that on Instagram. It'll be on one of our Instagrams. Yeah. So look out for that soon. So there you have it. That was our trip to the Clearwater Marine Aquarium and went to the Dolphins Beach Club. We had a fantastic trip. Fantastic time at the aquarium. Jackson really enjoyed himself. I really enjoyed myself. Me too. So all in all, <laughs> a fantastic time. And with that being said, we are off. We will see you all tomorrow. And now it's time to help. So today we wanted to shine a spotlight on the Clearwater Marine Aquarium. And first and foremost, they are a marine life hospital mm -hmm. and they're a Florida-based nonprofit organization where every dollar donated goes to food, care, and rehabilitation of marine animals. The other thing that's really cool that we were reading on their website is that right now, every dollar that's donated will be matched by one of their donors. So um, if you give a dollar, your donation is actually $2. Oh, that's neat. So the thing that I really took away from our trip to the aquarium is that a lot of these animals being at the aquarium is giving them a second chance at life. Right. If they had stayed in the wild or if the aquarium hadn't intervened, a lot of their um, injuries would have ended their lives. Right. So um, they're really doing great work and you can really tell how much the staff cares and loves for the animals. It was, it was just really awesome to see. And I hope that you will check out the link down below to learn more and donate if you can. Yeah. And thank you for watching this video.